Hey, I'm Bakers, it's Jack here. Bake with Jack, hold on, let me move these pears. So it looks like a different week. Roll it. <laughs> Hello there and welcome back to the Bake with Jack YouTube channel where I share with you a little bit of my bread making expertise every single Thursday. If that's your cup of tea and you're new here, you've got about 120 videos to catch up on. And if you don't want to miss the next one, click subscribe. I know I've done a video like this before, but I'm a little bit older, a little bit wiser now, and continuing on from the Back to Basics Yeasted Bread trilogy I did a while ago, I thought it seemed an appropriate time to revisit this topic and make something a little bit more thorough and hopefully a bit more useful. So I wanna show you how to shape up loaves for different tins, and I hope you get some value out of it. Cut to the table. Okay, here we are at the table, and I've got a range of tins. I'll pop the measurements up here and I'll also put them in the descriptions box underneath. This is a two pound loaf tin farmhouse style. It's got stickers on because I put stickers on for classes and they just don't come off again. That's the first one I'm gonna do, a two pound loaf tin. The next one is a one pound loaf tin which is roughly half the volume. It's exactly half the volume actually probably but that's the one pound loaf tin. I'll do a couple of those, you'll see that after. And the other one I'm gonna do is this a long one, okay? A long two pounder, that's your normal two pounder. That's your long two pounder. Here's the dimensions. Uh, and that's what it looks like. It's a long one. We treat the dough slightly differently because we've got to get it to fit inside of that tin. I really like this one. It makes nice small sandwiches for the kids. The dough I'm making for today's demonstration has the following specification. It's a straight up dough with 400 grams of white flour, 100 grams of brown or wholemeal flour, 340 grams of room temperature water, 10 grams of olive oil, 12 grams of fresh yeast, and eight grams of salt. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do before anything else is grease up my tins. I've done a video on this before. You don't have to do it, but it's a little bit more risky if you don't. You can sort of do it two ways. I've got a butter paper here that I've saved. You can use that inside like this. I hope that sounded nice on camera. Just like that, a thin coating, or you can just do it with a little drizzle of olive oil, like this. Get your hands in and just wipe it all over the bottom like that and all up the sides. Just You just want a little bit, but you want to get it everywhere, ideally. Now that's done, I'll pop them here to the side and go get our lovely dough. So this dough is ready to shape, okay? I'll put the method guide for you in shorthand underneath this video, okay? I mixed it, I kneaded it, I rested it for an hour, I divided it and pre-shaped it into these lovely balls and then I left them for another 15 minutes to relax and spread. You can see it's soft, it's relaxed, it was a firm bouncy ball, and now it's relaxed a bit. I realise here that for beginners there might be quite a big piece of the puzzle missing, which is the divide and pre-shape stage. If that's missing for you and you want to see that, let me know in the comments and I'll do you a video just on dividing and pre-shaping. This dough is one times the recipe, which means it's about 870 grams in total, which is perfect for our two pound tin as a guide. I will do a 500 gram of flour dough for a loaf in a two pound tin. So this one, this specific recipe being 500 grams of flour makes it though around about 870 grams. But I never work backwards from the size of the tin. I just go 500 grams of flour. That's enough to make the dough for a tin and that's it. First thing I'm gonna do is leave my uh, tin there out of the way and give this a little bit of dust on the top. Remember, we've got a dusty side now, which is the top side and the sticky sides underneath. So I'm gonna get my scraper underneath, remove it from the table where it's been resting and flip it up, up the right way up, okay? Always check it doesn't stick at this point. You really don't want things to stick. If it sticks now and you're doing stuff to it, it's just gonna stick even more. So if you need to, have a little dust of flour underneath, but nothing major if you can get away with it. Now I'm gonna push it down my fingers like this into a circle. It will naturally spread into a circle if I'm gentle with it and just push it down like this. You can give it a bit of knuckles if you want to, just until it naturally spreads into this disc. Again, check it doesn't stick. If it is sticking for any reason, you can sprinkle some flour around the edge, take your scraper and just shimmy it underneath like this. Loosen it up from the table, make sure it doesn't stick. Now, I'm gonna make two folds. I'm gonna put my hands in underneath 
I'm gonna pull it out sideways like this. This is the way I've been doing it in my classes for a long time now. Fold one half over the top and the other side over the top of that one. I'm going at a deliberate angle and I wanted to show you a few loaves so I could show you this time and time again so you could really understand what's going on here. I've gone at an angle, I want it to be pointy here and wide here, but where it is wide, I want this length here to be about the length of our tin. No longer, right? Because I'm gonna roll this up in a minute, it's gonna come down like a sausage. And as that sausage comes down, it's gonna get longer and longer. If this bit's already too long for our tin, sausage is gonna be too long for our tin. So now, again, just checking it doesn't stick underneath. Pushing it down like this, my fingers and knuckles, back down to where it was again. I'll take the top piece and make a little fold like that and stick it down, okay? This is the start of our sausage. Now, as I roll this down, I'm gonna give it a little bit of pressure with my thumbs here. It's really gentle, it's really not much, just to plump it up like that. A little push to plump this sausage up. Not pushing on the sausage, just underneath where that new seam is coming down. Roll, push, roll, push, roll, push, roll, push, roll, push. Nice and tight, and I've squeezed up that seam into the table with my thumbs, like that, so it's joined. Okay, now roll it over so the top's back on the top, and the new seam is underneath. I give it a nice dust like this. For stuff like this, less is more really. Once you've got that little loaf shape, you're good to go now. Like that, pop it into my tin, like this. Give it a little shake, just to make sure it's in the right place. Don't worry about holes like this on the sides, because it's gonna inflate, it's gonna feel that on its own. Don't feel the need to push it down like that, because you really don't need to. Let's put this to one side, and I'll do it again with a smaller one. So this time in a one pound tin, which is half the size, it's got half the amount of dough. That's about 435 grams of dough, which is a dough made from 250 grams of flour. I would never do one incidentally. I'd always use half a kilo of flour, make two loaves. You can always put one in the freezer or whatever. I'm gonna dust the top again, like before. Make sure there's a little bit everywhere. Get my scraper underneath and flip it upside down. Same deal, push down with your fingers like this, spit with your knuckles into a circle. Hands go underneath like this. Pull it out sideways, fold one side over and one side over the top. Make sure this width, before you commit, is not longer than the length of your tin here on the long side. Okay, now fingers and knuckles, push it back down where it was. Always make sure it doesn't stick. Pick up a little bit of flour along the way if you need to, to make sure it doesn't stick. Take the top bit down to start yourself off. Roll, push, roll, push, roll, push, roll, push, roll, push, roll, push. All the way to the end, like that. Give it a nice dust up at this point because that will help stop it from sticking to your tin. Make sure your seam is underneath like this and get it inside of your tin, like that. Okay, and that's another one, done. Things like this are always uh, worth repeating, I think, because you might pick up something I said from the first two that you missed on the first two or something. I might say something different this time, who knows, let's go. Upside down onto the table and push down like this. I'm gonna do something slightly different with this one. I'm gonna shape it in the same way, but I'm gonna do some cuts with a little knife on there, okay? So hands underneath, pull it out sideways. One side over, one side over the top. At that angle, make sure that's not as long as your tin. Right, that's perfect now. Top it down like that. A little bit of dust on my fingers, I was getting a bit sticky there. You don't wanna stick, you want minimum, see that? You want minimum flour, but you don't want it to stick. If you're sticking and struggling, have a little dust, but dust tactically, only on that side. A little bit on here on your fingers that you can't even see just to stop yourself from sticking. Okay, and now roll, push, roll, push, roll, push, roll, push, roll, push, roll, push, roll, push. Roll, push, down to the end, squeeze up that seam, and now you've got this lovely, bouncy sausage shape. Give it a nice dust. All over, I'm gonna take my knife this time before I put it in the tin, I'm gonna give it some slashes like this. One, two, three, four, and a little one. Five, now I'm gonna try and get in my tin like this without on the top. Oh yeah, not too bad. And that should open up nicely. I'll put some pictures of the final thing on here later. Uh, that should open up nicely, okay? And this knife I've used is a serrated knife. It's just a tomato knife. Stuff like this, when you've just shaped it, is easy to cut with a knife like this as opposed to a grignette. I would keep a grignette for stuff when it is puffed up, but a loaf like this, when it's nice and bouncy, a knife like this is perfect. Next, 
Our next tin is this long two pound, okay? So we're back up to our 870 grams of dough, which is one single batch of half a kilo of flour. I'm gonna dust the top slightly, flip it upside down onto the table. And this time I gotta be careful, right? Because if it's too short, no amount of rolling it out is gonna make it longer. It's just gonna get tighter and it's just gonna get more elastic -y, and it's really not gonna help me out. I've got one shot of this on video, okay? To get this just right, we'll see if I can make it happen, shall we? A little bit of dust underneath, okay? sticky on the top like this push down a bit more uh, thoroughly this time around because we want it to be nice and big ideally okay now I'm gonna have a little look at my loaf tin okay I want it to be sort of that long so I'm just gonna push it down a little bit more degas it and firm it up a little bit extra and this time I could pull this out but if I fold that over I'm gonna get a bit of a dog bone thing going on where I've got a skinny middle and fat ends on there so I'm gonna I'm, I'm, I think I'm not gonna do that okay I'm just gonna keep it like this and then begin the roll from the top all the way down to the bottom. Roll, push, roll, push, roll, push, roll, push, roll, push, roll, push. Oh, getting sticky there, that's okay. A little bit of flour should be okay. Always check that you're not sticking because the more you push into the table, if you are sticking, the more you're gonna stick like glue to the table. Now, once we're here, I'm just gonna take it bit by bit because we're quite long now. Roll and a push and roll and a push. One end to the other end. And there we go, that looks all right to me. So a seam now underneath, we can now go into our tin, like this. Oh, yeah. Okay, just like that. Leave it in its natural state. If that seam is underneath, which it is, right on the bottom, uh, it's okay. It's just gonna puff. It's gonna fill that space in the gaps all by itself. It's gonna sit there nicely and puff up. So there they are, these are not gonna go straight in the oven now. If you get any, any doubts about that, I did a video about the process of bread making uh, in the yeasted bread back to basic series. It's gonna rest up now for another hour or so before they hit the oven. And I'll do them for about 40 minutes at 190 degrees today. And they should come out lovely. I'll pop a picture here. And underneath, I'll leave the spec of the dough, the measurements of the tins, and exactly the process of the dough I did up till this point that you missed. And there you have it. That's how to shape up a loaf in a tin. I hope this was helpful to you. And don't forget, if you do think that a dividing and pre-shaping video is necessary, if that would be helpful too, let me know in the comments and I'll make it happen. I'll see you next week for another weekly bread making tip. Bye-bye. And there it is. Thanks for stopping by for your weekly bread making tip. And even though this might seem like a sense of deja vu for some of you, I hope you've got some additional value out of this new updated version. Don't forget the link to the Home Bakers Bulletin is always in the comments box underneath. If you don't want to miss any of my content from the week, I'll put it in a nice, neat package straight into your inbox every single Thursday. Sign up underneath. See you next week.